welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you guys uh, were able to make it. Um, if you're just joining, my name is Ursula Sebastian. My friends call me Ursula or Uju. I consider you my friend, so you can call me anyone. Um, if this is your first time here, hugs and kisses to you. If you're returning, hugs and kisses to you too. I'm super excited about this video um, because I think it answers a lot of questions that a number of you have sent to me in the past couple of months especially on my Instagram and speaking of Instagram if you haven't uh, followed me on there yet you gotta do that now yo you gotta do that now so just click on you can see the handles just below so follow Ursula Sebastian and couch conversations <laughs> because that's what we do here we have really tangible and important conversations out here on the couch just so that you know you can take home with you information that is really tangible and really needed and uh, different points in your life and so today we're talking about the part two of um, getting an MBA I want to believe that you have watched the previous video and if you haven't please click on the thumbnail you should see it somewhere here click on the thumbnail watch that video i say that because that video is a precursor to this one or should i say a it's the appetizer and this is the main meal and as the foodie that i am <laughs> I would always eat an appetizer and eat a main course so um, I can't but really you need to watch that first video just because it really sets the foundation and sets the tone for this video right and that last video was you know thinking about getting an MBA really just asking the question why do you want an MBA and so my assumption is you've watched that video you've answered those key questions you've decided that you want an MBA and now you're here so that's what this video is about. This video is for folks who have really answered a question that they want an MBA. And so that's what we're answering today. That's what we're getting deep into all of those pieces. So disclaimer, this video is going to be a little bit longer than I usually do. So it's going to be a little longer than 15 minutes, but it's really important that I hit all the points that um, I need to. After, yo, I have notes for you guys and I, I really want you guys to take the notes home and I don't want to miss any points and so I apologize in advance if the video is long all right all right let's get into it okay so now that you've decided that you want an MBA the organic question is where do you want an MBA do you want an MBA internationally that's different from your country of residence um, what are your priorities do you want an Ivy League school do you want the best school yo where I'm from we're always looking for what's the best option for us and so when I was looking to go to school I had um, my intention was I wanted to go to the best school but I also also wanted to go to a school in a country that served my other intangible needs again if you watch the first video it would give you context to what I'm talking about I wanted to go to a school in a country I wanted to go to the best school in a country where I would have the flexibility to work after school if I chose to I didn't want to go somewhere where after school they're telling me to go back to my home country immediately I wanted a couple of years to at least work Secondly, I um, wanted a country where if I decided to stay back as an immigrant, are there options for me? And so those are the key questions that came to my mind when I was choosing where to go to school and inevitably what school to apply to. So I had the US and um, Canada. I didn't think about the, U the UK at all. They have great schools in the UK, don't get me wrong, but I didn't think about it solely because of the immigration piece to me. At the time when I was planning and applying, there wasn't there were still speculations about postgraduate work permit but it wasn't cast it wasn't law yet and so I didn't just want to leave my future to chance I know a friend of mine who went to Oxford and right after you know he had to go back home um, I didn't want that for me at all I wanted the option I wanted if I was going back home it was my decision to go back home not because some countries chasing me out and I didn't want to stay illegally so those are the questions that I had to ask so once you answer those questions you know if you have those intangibles that you need to pay attention to and if you want to go to like an Ivy League school or if you want to go to um, 
uh, if, if that doesn't matter to you you just want to do an MBA and, and get on with it um, which leads me to my next point about counting the cost because if you want to go to the best school or you want to go to an Ivy League school <laughs> It costs money. <laughs> you know, I always say this quote or this verse in scripture where if a man wants to build a house, he first counts the cost. You got to count the cost, right? You have to figure out what is it going to cost you? Literally, what's it going to cost you? Um, that's the first piece. Some schools, it could charge like from 50k, $50,000 to over 100. Um, my school costs over 100. I know the Ivy Leagues cost closer to 200, like the Whartons, the Harvard, they cost closer to 200. So it's not an easy, it's not a flimsy decision you just make because it go, it's going to cost you money. So be sure that you know exactly what it costs before you put in that application. Because in most cases, for some schools, it will cost you to put in an application anyway so you don't want to waste your time applying to a school if you know the cost is out of your wheelhouse anyway so make sure all of that decision is um, cast in stone something else I also did I would admit I did it when I moved here but I encourage you to do it um, prior to moving here is really um, calculating your MPV so your NPV is really, it stands for net present value and it's the difference between your present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows over a period of time. Literally in simple terms, it's really just understanding the value of an investment over a period of time discounted to today, right? So what that does is it gives you a sense of okay, what is this really going to cost me? And I'm going to also say that next to really just understanding what your opportunity cost is. So let me say it this way. If you're going to give two years of your life, especially if you're doing a full-time course, okay, let me use that as an example. If you're going to use do two-year MBA and you're going to give two years of your life full-time to an MBA, it means you're not working. What could you possibly be missing out on in terms of opportunity cost if you give that time to doing an MBA, right? So look at the opportunity cost. If you were not doing an MBA and you were still in your, say your current company, say you're working, how much would you be losing out of? If for instance, in that two years, you possibly would get a promotion and you possibly would, with that promotion, get an increase in salary, what is that going to cost you in terms of you know the cost that you're forfeiting to do this MBA? So comparing both of them and then seeing okay, what I'm letting go of to do this MBA, um, if that makes sense for you in the long run. When I did my MPV, it was super positive. I must add, your MP your MPV has to be positive for that investment to make sense to you, right? Um, for some people, it might be negative. I know one or two people who had negative MPVs, but the thing about the MPV is that in the calculations, it doesn't factor in your intangibles, right? And so for a few friends who did the MPV and it was kind of negative, their intangibles outweighed the financial responsibility or the financial cost um, that was it was going to be laid on them. And so they went with it and they are all the better for it, right? And so which leads me back to that first uh, or second question in my first video about, you know, counting the cost and versus the intangibles as well, because that's also something that will factor into the decision that you make in the long run. So understand what it costs you to get the MBA, the actual MBA, understand what your MPV is, understand what your opportunity cost is and then have a holistic view of what this decision to do an MBA is going to cost you. Third thing is looking to doing a bit of research on the MBA curriculum. Now, for some courses, some are heavy on marketing courses, some are heavy on finance courses, some are heavy on product design, uh, design thinking, uh, strategic thinking, uh, business, some are heavy on data analysis, data science. It depends on where you go to school. So I would say do your research, look at the curriculum, right? Um, I looked at the curriculum for Rotman and it was a bit finance heavy but I didn't mind because I wanted a challenge <laughs> when I eventually came I might have shed a tear or two when I went through some finance courses but I'm not going to 
I'm not going to confess to that. Actually, I'll confess. I shed a tear or two, um, just because I didn't have a finance background, and the first year was really heavy on finance. But I liked the challenge. Eventually, it taught me a few things. Um, so yes, that was it. I also loved with Rotman. They had this behavioral science lab, which I was really curious about at that time, and so that's why you know I fell in love with the curriculum. But yeah, if you know what your goals are or what you're interested in learning within the MBA then look at the different schools look at their curriculum before deciding which school you want to apply to and I also say that because it would help you in when you tell your story when you write your your essays when you do your interviews it kind of just paints the picture that you have done your research and you actually want the school and it just it gives you way more points in terms of getting the admission in the long run because a lot of schools have thousands hundreds of thousands of applicants come through you want to do research that will add to your story that will make you stand out all right okay. all right another point that I want to raise is the visa process um, so especially because it kind of affects the cost of the MBA to you um, I'll say this from my point of view for Rotman, there's a different fee for domestic students versus international students. Now I came as, a, as an international student and so my what I paid was almost 20,000 more than a domestic student, right? So if you are planning ahead of time, which uh, you know I tried to do, but I eventually I ended up just coming with a student visa. But if you plan ahead of time and you think, okay, I don't want to pay international students fee, then maybe for the case of Canada, apply and get a PR first. Um, and you know, just getting a PR would give you a bit of a buffer or some discounts when it comes to the fees that you pay just because people who are resident here have a different fee so you should think about you know what your visa application implications would have on your fees because 20k is a lot of money i wish i knew that earlier <laughs> all right now you have decided what country you want to go to what school you want to go to because you've looked at the curriculum you've looked at the visa process you've decided all of that Stop making moves now like um, whatever it is whether it's an MBA tour I'm, I mentioned MBA tour because it was super helpful for me when I was doing my planning so um, MBA tour is a group of there's an organization that organizes um, tours from different schools to different countries so they came to Lagos Nigeria when I was planning which school to apply to and there was like a whole myriad of schools I think like 20 schools were on display so there was Kellogg's there was Wharton I believe there was Rotman there was um in Siad. it's a bunch of schools right and each school would have their their brochure their paraphilia everything they would have representatives they would have admission reps who you would go and you would speak to so i remember speaking to someone at Siad. i remember speaking to someone at Wharton I believe and then I remember speaking to someone at Rotman a lovely lady Leah she's no longer Wharton now, at Rotman now but she was super incredible she answered all my questions it was also a great opportunity for me to put my best foot forward so again when you meet people like that make sure you've done your research before going for tours like that just do a research MBA tour see if you're coming to your country um, and then go dress the part look the part I remember wearing this nice nude dress and heels I was looking good y'all if I do say so myself anyway and then I had my questions I spoke to Leah you know we even had dinner right after you know I wanted to show her what our famous jollof rice was so we had dinner uh, with other uh, people who were considering Rotman as well some of them didn't eventually go to Rotman but it was just good to have that connection I met someone you know during that dinner who eventually didn't go to Rotman but we're still friends to today Hello, OJ. <laughs> but it was um, it was a really great experience. So um, Google those stores, subscribe to their newsletter. Um, I think they do have newsletters. Um, and then, so so just so you know, when these stores are coming to a city near you, some people I know when I was in uh, Nigeria when they came, some people missed it, so they had to fly to Ghana to go for the tour there. So again, these stores are super important because sometimes it's just like career fairs. Sometimes Sometimes you might get um, admissions right on the spots 
I might not be sure about that but you know some people just creating a really great impression at that point will give you a bit of a leg up in the application and admission process right all right and that leads me to my next point about starting networking so in addition to going for these stores you want to reach out to LinkedIn uh, groups on LinkedIn groups on Facebook connect with people you know start to especially uh, uh, the school that you're looking to apply the alumni from that school or the second year students in that school when I decided I wanted to go to Roman I immediately went online I looked for second year students and then I reached out to some of them there were and I can speak for Canada people are super lovely here super ready to encourage you to support you whatever you need I reached out to this amazing lady Toyo C we're still friends to this day she didn't know me from Adam and then I reached out to her. I was like, I need to talk to you. She was a second year student and she was so kind. She even offered to review my um, my essay. Some schools would ask you to write two or three essays. Some schools would ask you to, you know, come for video interviews and stuff like that. In my case, I had a video interview. I also had to write two essays. And um, Toyosi was super helpful in reviewing my essay. She had lots of feedback. You know, when she sent back my essay, to me I had like red notes <laughs> but it was super great and to see if you're watching this shout out to you too thank you so much um but yeah reach out to people um also once you decide that you want to go to a particular school or in a particular country start looking for internship opportunities yo i know someone in my cohort who had an Amazon internship before the program started. I know someone who's going to MIT in September and she already has an, inter an internship. Like, stop making moves. Don't wait, yo, don't wait. So um, always ask questions. Again, I always say this, you cannot walk this road alone. You cannot do this in a silo. Always ask questions, reach out to people because you'll be better off for it, right? People have walked this road ahead of you. So ask questions. So you save yourself um, some mistakes my mom used to say the traveler that asks questions never get lost think about it <laughs> but yeah um, I asked I thought I asked a lot of questions but still I still missed some things on the way um, but imagine if I didn't ask questions at all I probably wouldn't have even gotten the admission so always ask questions okay and then the last piece that I want to talk about is the cycles of admission now depending on the country or the school uh, they might have varying number of cycles per year um, some schools have three admission cycles some schools have four admission cycles I always, always encourage people to apply in the first cycle. Why do I say this? This is because admission reps or admission departments in school have a certain quota, right? They have certain quota for, they have a total number of people or range that they want to admit each year. Within that number, they have a percentage of domestic versus international students. In my year, it was about 57% international students and then 55%. They might waver by one or two points but usually that's the case and then when you do apply in the first cycle it gives you an opportunity to get in ahead of time in front of the admission reps especially when it comes to consideration for scholarships this especially is true for schools where you don't have to do an extra application for scholarships during admission some schools just give you applications or rather um, scholarships once they're giving you an admission which was my case i applied during the first round and um, thankfully i was able to um, put in a strong GMAT, relatively strong GMAT score, and also um, the other parts of my application, like the essay, the interviews. I didn't, I didn't try to over-index on one versus the other. I tried to balance it out and make sure they were all strong in some way. Um, my GMAT wasn't as strong as when I think of the other people who came to school from India and China. Their GMAT was like in the 700s. In my humble score, couldn't compare with that. Um, but I knew that when it comes to my interview, my essays, yo, because I have really strong stories. And so um, 
that's what I leveraged in my admission package and I believe that's why they gave me the scholarship that they gave me which was super helpful you might not get that if you're waiting till like the fourth round or the third round to put in your application because what would have happened in that round is they would have most likely filled in the quota for students that they want in that particular year you would have to be incredibly exceptional. Your score would have to be exceptional, your story would have to be exceptional for you to then be considered for you know, a sizable scholarship in like the, sec the third or fourth cycle. Why would you wanna put yourself through all that pressure when you can just apply in the first round? right so um yeah just save yourself all that stress except for some reason you just couldn't make the first round that's why i always advise people when it comes to writing your gmat or gre depending on your school um do that early i wrote mine in like april or may i think just so that i can meet the september uh timeline for admissions give yourself time um just because sometimes you might write the exam you might not get the score that you wanted Excuse me and then you might want to put in another try and write the exam again these things are not cheap i don't know why they make it so expensive but anyway you might want to write it again just so that you can have a better score and then still meet the admissions uh deadline right so give yourself time um also always try to reach out to people when i was studying for gmat um we had this group uh again I leveraged a network of people who were looking to go do an MBA. Not everyone eventually went to do an MBA, but just the fact that um, I was in that group, we studying together, we were, we had, because some of us had full-time jobs while we were studying for an MBA, we had schedules together. We even leveraged one of our friends who was doing, at that time, doing an MBA in Wharton and Harvard. Shout out to John. He was phenomenal if you're ever watching this video um he wasn't writing gmat he was already in the mba but he just really wanted to support us give us the tricks the tips to answer questions quickly speed is super important with gmat like i have a degree in engineering so i think i'm pretty okay with math but gmat will humble you <laughs> so give yourself time prepare um and then read with other people if that's your vibe for me i really it was really good that i had that community so it was good meanwhile i don't know why i'm wearing a tiktok shirt i don't walk in tiktok but who knows who knows <laughs> If you're TikTok, you might want to slide into the DM. Anyway, um, not to digress. Uh, so just gather all of that information, meet up with people, study together, and you know, um, share your essays with people just so that they can give you feedback because you might be so close to your admission package, you might have some blind spots, but just sharing it with other people will give you like a holistic view, what you could do better, what is really great about your essay. So it just gives you that uh, proper platform to then submit a strong essay. I remember doing that for a couple of first years when they were coming in and it was really helpful for them. So I would say leverage that, right? Um, yeah, I think this video has gone on too long, yo. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm gonna stop there. I have a lot to share, but I think all of it falls under the pillars that I just mentioned um, during this video. So I hope it was very helpful to you. I hope it was helpful to you. And if you have any other questions, yo, um, I think I am here and I had the success that I had during my MBA because people were very willing to help. And that's why I'm super passionate about helping people as well. So if you have any questions, put it in the comment section. We will chat, we will kiki, and I'll also answer your questions in the chat, okay? Or if you want a different perspective from someone who went to say, in Seattle or Wharton or other schools and you want to hear their own stories, let me know. I could get someone to come sit on my couch with me and then would answer those questions for you. Um, again, I'm here to serve, so just let me know what your needs are. I apologize again. I know I apologize in the be beginning of the video for how long this video is, but yeah, we had to get through this point, yo. It's important, okay? Um, so yeah, with that, we've come to the end of this video. Finally, round of applause for you. Thank <laughs> you.
uh, we'll come to the end of this video I hope it was helpful to you um, we're going to continue on a series of post-grad I don't want to call it a series right now because I don't know how this would go but I'm just really f I, I think I want to follow your lead so if there are other things you want to see about an MBA journey or a post-grad journey in general just put in the comment section or you know follow the instagram page and send a dm uh let me know and we can put it on couch conversations and have a chat about it um yeah i should stop talking now okay <laughs> well thank you for chilling with me for this however long this video is 20 minutes ish um and uh subscribe if you haven't subscribed already follow ursula sebastian and couch conversations on instagram and i look forward to seeing you in the next video until then stay cute stay beautiful Mwah.